LED lights use light emitting diodes to produce light. Now there's a few things that we already know about these. For example, LED lights can be significantly brighter than conventional bulbs of similar capacity. Also, LED lights consume a tiny fraction of the electricity a conventional bulb consumes. That's a big help when you're sitting in traffic with several demands in your electric system and only a low power generator alternator at idle speed trying to feed everything. And third, LED bulbs come on and off with stunning speed and brilliance, which helps our stop lamps and turn signals to get people's attention. Now the purpose of today's presentation is to focus on some of the common questions concerning LEDs and how to install LEDs in your classic British car. The first point we have to address, LED lamps are polarity sensitive. The overwhelming popular polarity bias for cars in the world today is toward negative ground. For that reason, LED lamps, to date, are only for negative ground cars. Here at Moss, we're working to add positive ground LEDs to our offerings, but as of the time this video is being produced, positive ground LEDs are simply only on the wish list. It's the same problem we face when looking for positive ground radios. Positive ground radios just aren't out there. So if your car is positive ground or positive earth and you want LEDs, you either have to convert the car to negative ground or give up the LED idea. The next thing is that LEDs call for an electronic flasher. Why? Well, first we have to remember what a flasher does. This is a traditional flasher. These are usually located in line before the turn signal switch. Power comes in one side of this and out the other, and when it's time for you to use your turn signals, this detects that, and what it does is it operates and makes the power blink. The way that it does it is like this. Inside there's a piece of metal, two pieces of metal actually bonded together, we call that a bimetallic spring, and it sits like this. As the electricity flows through, it gets down and makes contact here, so it flows very well. But this creates heat, and when this gets warm, it bends, it changes shape, it goes like that. A moment later it cools and it comes back down and touches again. Then it gets warm and does back and forth, and each time it does that, it does two things. It makes noise, it goes bink, 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 that's the noise you hear in your car, and it stops the current from flowing and starts it off, on, off, on, off, on. If you would like to see the actual parts in one of these working, there is a YouTube video from us that will help you to see it. So all you have to do is go to YouTube. You're going to go to, when you're there at YouTube, there's a search feature at the top. You want to go ahead and type in the word MOS space, motors, space, turn, space, signals, enter. That will take you right to the video and you can actually watch the, uh, the workings inside one of these. Now this technician recently tested a conventional light bulb and it found that it took about two amps to operate it. An LED replacement for that same bulb was installed in the same socket and it consumed approximately two tenths of one amp. That's one tenth power demand. Now a flash that's designed to operate using heat from current passing through it is simply not going to work with so little current going to LED lamps. The solution is to use a flasher that does not rely on heat from current flow to operate. That's where electronic flashers come to center stage. Electronic flashers sense almost any demand for current and then the flasher turns the current off and on by using micro switches inside. That's much smarter than using current to make heat to operate a flasher. And since electronic flashers are not dependent on the current demands of the bulbs, they work well even when the current demand varies. If a conventional bulb in your car fails, there's less draw, or if you add a lamp or a trailer to your car, you get more draw. In most cases, electronic flashers will continue to work as they should. Now we here at Moss found that even then, some electronic flashers are simply not sensitive enough to detect the very small amount of current that LEDs might demand. The answer is to use an electronic flasher that's engineered to be sensitive enough to detect even the tiny current demands of a system using LEDs. We have those flashers here at Moss. And the last thing is ballasts. Okay. The subject of ballasts is complicated by the fact that many of our classic British cars need a pair of ballasts and many of our classic cars don't. So your car will either need two or your car won't need any. And in almost every occasion, the, the reason or the issue is hidden in the way that the turn signal indicator on your dashboard is wired. Let's see if we can find out what's going on with that. I have here a basic diagram of a simple wiring for a turn signal system. Okay, it's very simple. We have your turn signal flasher. Okay, we're familiar with that. 
You have your turn signal switch. There's a finger inside here that moves up and down. And virtually all these cars, green with white indicates the right side of the car. Green with red indicates the left side of the car. So let's turn it on and see what it does. I'm going to use my pocket knife so you can see it better. Turn on my right turn signals. When I do, current flows through the flasher and it begins to blink. Off, on, off, on, off, on. I now have flashing power. It runs down here, goes through these two bulbs on the right side of the car, front and rear, and the bulbs on the outside of the car start blinking. Off, on, off, on, just like they're supposed to. If I put my left turn signals on, like this, current flows through, it's blinking, it comes to these two here, and the left side of the car, off, on, off, on, exactly the way that it's supposed to. In this case, this flasher has a third terminal on it. This terminal goes to a small bulb. This is located right in your dashboard. And when this is sending blinking power to this side of the car or that side of the car, blinking power gets sent to this bulb. And what's going to happen then when I put my turn signals on, I have a little light on the dash going off, on, off, on, telling me my turn signals are on. That's great. I want you to notice something important. This bulb has power going to it. This is the symbol for a bulb, and this is the symbol for ground. They're all like that. Power, gr bulb, ground, power, bulb, ground, you get the point. Bulb, ground, bulb, ground. That's the way they're supposed to work. That's how they all work. Now, let's try something different. This looks a little more busy, but it's the same thing. You already recognize the parts. In your mind's eye, block out everything that's unimportant. There's your turn signal flasher right there. Here's your turn signal switch right here. You can see how she works. In this particular one, the right side of the car, green and white happens to be up here, and the left, green and red is down there, but it's all what you already know about. Let's turn our right turn signals on. I do. Power comes through the flasher, it starts blinking, off, on, off, on. Runs through the green and white leads, and the right front and the right rear of the car begin to blink, off, on, off, on, like they're supposed to, but there's a third green and white wire. This goes to a bulb. Where is this located? It says right hand turn signal indicator. In other words, on the dashboard off to the right, there's a small bulb that comes on only when the bulbs on the right side of the car come on. So outside of the car, we're going off, on, off, on, and on the right side of the dash, off, on, off, on the small bulb. If I put my left turn signals on, the same thing happens in reverse. The outside of the left and the right, the left front and left rear of the car blink, off, on, off, on, and a small lamp on the dashboard on the left side blinks off, on, off, on. So in this system, we know not only that our lights are on, but whether it's the left or the right. And that helps us to remember to turn them off and which one to turn off. So now let's take a look at the last diagram. And this is where we're going to see the need for the ballast. Here we are. We've got our car. It's all set up. You recognize the components. We've got the flasher over here. In fact, it's ready to go. We've got our turn signal here. And let's go ahead and turn this on and watch what happens. I use my knife again to simulate our switch. And I'm going to turn my switch here. I'm going to turn it on. The right turn signals are on. Power comes through the flasher through, and the two lights are flashing. Off, on, off, on, off, on, just like they're supposed to. The left will do the same thing. Now, you may notice already that there's an extra green and white wire here. What is that for? Well, this is the light that's on the dash. So when power runs to these lights here on the right side of the car, and they're blinking off and on like they're supposed to, power runs to the light on the dash, and I can see where you're going already. You're saying, wait a minute, stop, 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 there's a problem here. And I say, what's the problem? And you say, bulb, ground, bulb, ground, bulb, ground, bulb, ground. There's a bulb, there's no ground. This light can't work. And you're, you're Well, you're about 50% right. This bulb actually does have a ground, and it does work. It's just not obvious. Let's see what happens. Power runs through the green and white lamps to try to get to these bulbs over here. Some of the power runs to this light. It goes through the filament like it's supposed to and heads into this side of the car. And you say, well, I don't see a ground over here, but there are. There's two grounds over here, right here and right here. The electricity runs through these leads, through these bulbs, and gets to the ground. Now, why this works is that the small bulb on the dashboard offers an enormous amount of resistance. That kind of resistance means that only a teeny amount of electricity can get through here. So the small amount of electricity comes through, splits, runs along these two leads, a little teeny bulb of electricity gets through these bulbs and gets to the ground, and this can work. I turn my turn signals on, the right side comes on, off, on, off, on like it's supposed to, the lamp on the dash, off, on, off, on like it's supposed to. These two bulbs are actually getting electricity, but it's so small they don't glow. And there we get our ground. Now let's leave the car just like it is and just imagine that the owner of the car has decided, I want to put LED lamps in my car. Well, he goes and he gets an LED lamp electronic flasher and puts it in. Great.
He goes and he puts LEDs in the four corners of his car. One, two, three, four. Great. He's excited. He calls his wife out. He says, honey, please go ahead and jump in the car. I'm going to stand behind the car and I want you to put the turn signals on. So she says, okay, I'm ready to go. And he says, turn on the right turn signals, please. She does. The flasher, the electronic flasher, detects that we've got LEDs at the end, and even though they draw just a teeny bit of current, it starts working anyway. Off, on, off, on. Blinking power comes through. The right front and the right rear of the car begin to blink like they're supposed to. Off, on, off, on. The light on the dashboard gets power. Off, on, on. She blinks. And a teeny amount of current comes over here looking for ground. It runs through these two LED lights to get to ground. LED lights need a teeny amount of power to come on. And what happens? Even though it's just a teeny amount, not enough to light a regular bulb, it will light these. And what we get is what we at Moss call sympathy blinking. These two come on, off, on, off, on. This one comes on, off, on, off, on. And these two over here come right along with them, off, on. All four corners of the car start blinking. Well, how are we going to fix that? Well, think about it for a minute. The electricity is over here. It runs through this bulb. The electricity has one object in life. It wants to get to ground. That's all it wants. It comes over here. It's looking for ground to get to these two. Let's give it a ground. That's where the ballast comes in. We take our ballast. The ballast is going to sit in the car. We're going to tie it to the lead going to one of these lamps. And then we're going to take the end of it and tie it to ground. Okay, that's easy. Now, the electricity comes through the bulb. The electricity is lazy. All the electricity wants is to find ground, the quickest, easiest, cleanest ground it can. And she starts out and she says, well, there's ground there, but I got to get through an LED. And there's another one I got to get through an LED. But this is a nice ground. It's right here and it's handy. It runs through this and she's grounded. So the electricity runs through here, through the ballast and to ground. Because the ground, the power runs through here, these two bulbs, these two LEDs are energy starved. They cannot blink, so they don't. Now we turn the right side of the car on, blink, 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 this blinks and the current runs through here to get to ground. On the other side of the car, which is why we need two, we put a ground, we connect again a ground to one of these two leads here, we ground the other end of this to the other end of the ballast, and when the power comes into this side, we turn our left turn signals on, it flows through the bulb and comes to ground here. That's why some of these cars need a pair of these ballasts and some don't. Now, you don't want to be tripped up, okay? You don't want to say, well, if it has one light on the dash or two, I do or I don't need ballast. That's not necessarily the case. Or if I have a turn signal flasher that has two terminals or three terminals, that's not the case either. Okay, there are a number of variations. In our catalog and on our website, it will tell you whether your car specifically needs the ground or not that a ballast is going to give you. So we've learned three things today. We've learned that LED lamps are only for negative ground cars. We've learned that we're going to use an electronic flasher, and not just any electronic flasher. An electronic flasher is sensitive enough to pick up the demands that even a small LED is going to produce. And in some cars, we just may need a pair of ballasts to allow the system the way that we want it to. Thank you.